Section 1.6, Relative Motion. We will start by discussing the addition of velocity. In the past, we have assumed that physics can be modeled by masses as points moving along a trajectory. Take parabolic arcs of projectile motion that we covered a few videos ago as an example. So that could be modeled as a projectile motion in the x and y axis. For us, we are going to use a reference frame such that we have three axes to describe our 3D world. So a reference frame is essentially the coordinate system that we decide to use. So here is a three-dimensional reference frame that we can use. Now, what we might want to do is add another observer that might be moving around. Thus, we will need to consider relative motion and reference frames. Take this as an example. Let's say that we have a nice little beach here. So there's our beach, some yellow sand, it's got some blue water, and a little fishy. Okay. We will add a reference frame for our observer on the shore. And this is going to be a two-dimensional reference frame. We can imagine that we're looking at this from the position um, of a satellite looking down these people on the beach. And we will also have, maybe we could have a motorboat that is speeding along um, in its own reference frame. And the motorboat is speeding along in the water, cruising around, um, and it has a position vector r. Our little boat friend is here. I'll label this point P. And our motorboat is moving with velocity v in the reference frame of this observer. So this shouldn't be anything too unfamiliar. OK. But now we also have another friend. Our other friend is on a boat at, um, well, O prime. We'll call this O prime, our observer. So our observer is on a little ship. Our little ship is moving around. So what we need to do, since the ship is moving around, is add another reference frame. So this is the reference frame of the ship. Move this R out of the way so we don't need to deal with that in our reference frame. So this is going to have axes of X and Y. And this is going to have axes of x prime and y prime. And the ship is moving around. And um, we're going to have a vector from the observer to the ship. Now, the observer to the ship, we're going to call this vector capital R. This vector capital R between the ship and the shore, between the shore and the ship. So that connects our reference frames. And finally, we have how our boat, our speedboat, is moving around with respect to our observer, so our, our, our primed observer. So we'll call this vector our prime. All these vectors are going to change because everything's moving here. We're going to make the assumption again, that all of the times are the same. So if I have a clock on the ship, and I have a clock on the speedboat, and I have a clock on the shore, then they're all going to read the same values, right? We're not dealing with special relativity just yet. We um, would need to worry about something like that in that case. OK. So we have a couple of ways that we can um, model this motion. So this is a big definition. This is basically all we have for relative velocity. But essentially what we say is if I am going um, between some point, if I have a position vector r sub 0i, that's going to be equal to r sub 0j plus r vector j i. So you can imagine this is a system, um, a triangle between o, i, and j, 
And the direction of these indices on the R vectors are just indicating which way the vector goes. So what we can do is we can perform a derivative, uh, time derivative, and we can get the same expression for velocity. Uh, not an R there, a V here. And we can differentiate once again to get acceleration. Okay, and we can keep differentiating to get the jerk, the crackle, the pop, all of those other derivatives. But again, we only need to deal with acceleration as our highest order derivative, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, note that um, the equations above are not going to account for rotation. So we can decompose as much as we want using the sine, cosine for your different components of your vectors. And um, it also um, is, is now going to be something interesting to see what happens when we change the indices. So if I change the indices, if I have a vector r here, if I have a vector r, this would be i and j, so i, j. On well, the vector from j back to i, r will be r, i, j between j and i. Uh, or wait, no, we're going between j and i, so we get r, j, i. And it's the negative of r, i, j, right? Because it's pointing in the opposite direction as the same, same place. So we can make the following relationships. Another definition. You can say r, j, i is equal to negative r sub i, j. v vector sub j, i is equal to negative v vector sub i, j. And finally, a vector sub j, i is equal to negative a vector sub i, j. Okay, so that's nice to have. Um, and again, if we can say that the acceleration is zero, then we're allowed to make the Galilean transformation. So we can use the Galilean transformation. Here's another definition. Given that the acceleration between point two and point one is zero, we can make the following statement. V sub zero one is equal to V sub zero two plus V sub two one. Okay, now those are all the definitions that we need. And we can now try a quick example. So um, this example is from uh, physics for scientists and engineers. Um, I believe it's somewhere in chapter four, one of those problems. So I'm going to do this in variable form because I don't want to use my calculator right now. But let's say a train rolls by at some amount of meters per second. You see a cat on one of the flat cars. The cat is walking towards the back of the train, the speed of um, some amount of meters per second, relative to the car. On the cat is a flea, which is walking from the cat's neck to its tail at a speed of some amount of meters per second, relative to the cat. How fast is the flea moving relative to you? Okay, so what do we have here? So in this scenario, we have... Um, a reference frame where we are, and then we have a reference frame of the train, and then we have a reference frame of the cat. The flea is moving on the cat. So the train is moving with some velocity. So this, this guy is moving with velocity. This um, cat is moving, um, well, the cat is walking toward the back of the train. It's moving toward the back of the train. And then the flea is moving towards the front of the cat. Um, or it's moving towards the back of the cat. So we have another velocity, okay? So essentially what we need to do is we just need to add all of these velocities and use the um, use all of the little rules that we have with the index indices. So what I'm going to say is that I'm going to say the velocity of the fly 
with respect to the ground, we'll call this the ground reference frame, is going to be equal to the velocity of the flea with respect to the cat plus the velocity of the cat with respect to the train plus the velocity of the train with respect to the ground. Uh, with respect to the ground, okay? So you see how these indices make sense? Um, and you might be asking me, well, um, what if we have a sign error here? Well, we're not gonna have a sign error because these are vectors and these are abstract at the moment. It's in variable form. And if I am told that the flea is moving towards the back of the cat, then um, I will know that that velocity is going to be positive, but if I know that the cat is moving towards the back of the train, the train's moving in the opposite direction, well, then I know that my velocity for the cat is going to be negative. So that's how addition of velocities works. Thanks for watching.